Welcome back, everyone, as we go for another fantastic hike in this beautiful autumn weather. It is just gorgeous. If you are new to the channel, my name is Mike, and Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I post a video where I go on a hike, and you see the hike through my point of view. And every Monday and Friday, I tell a story as we go along. But on Wednesday, it's a sights and sound video. So you will hear the sounds of wherever I am without me interrupting with a story or my non-stop babbling. If you have not subscribed, why not? It's easy to do. Just look at that big red button with the white letters. It says subscribe. All you gotta do is hit it. Just hit that button and you are now subscribed to this channel. And then just hit that notification bell so that way you can be notified every time I post a new video. And also, by the way, I want you to punch that like button. Just punch it. Like, give it a good old punch if you like this video. It, it helps. All this stuff helps. Subscribing, liking, punching that like button. Feel free to comment as well. All of this stuff tells the YouTube gods that, hey, this video is kind of something. And maybe other people want to see it too. Because otherwise, they'll just bury it. And nobody else will see it. And they'll just stay here in the darkness. Today, we're hiking in a place that's very special to me. One of my favorite places to go. This is actually where I grew up. And my family had a house just along the trail. It was so easy to get here. All I had to do was walk, walk right through the backyard and enter the property. And the trail was within feet away, right there. So it was such a great place to, to grow up. And back then they used to allow bike riding. So my brothers and I and my little sister, when she was old enough, would grab our bikes and come back here and just ride around. And it was so cool. And it was safe and, well, safe by our terms back then. Now people would be like, no, that's this is not safe at all. You can't let kids go riding their bikes back here. But it was fine. No, none of us ever got hurt. We, we loved it. It was great. Every day was an adventure. And we would try to test the limits of how far we could go. And we never, ever made it to the end of the trail. And to this, to this day, I have never made it to the end of this trail. It is a massive place. But I typically like to come here randomly and have been coming here randomly since I grew up and moved out of the area. And it is always my favorite place. I think about um, this farm field, which we'll, we'll come across, where there used to be horses there. And the horses would always come out to greet us. And it was just the coolest thing. And the field itself is my dream property. I have always wanted to buy the property, preserve most of it, and build my house in another sec uh, area of this property. It is just everything. It's as if, if I could create my own dreamland, this property would be that dreamland. Now, the other cool thing was on the other side of this trail, it's actually the main entrance and how I get here now is a park. And it was really a five to seven minute walk from my house to get to the park. So when we had sports and we had baseball or practice, all I had to do was walk back here and go right to the, to the park. I never had to actually go walk on the main street or even ride my bike on the main street. It just was so fantastic. There's also a lake down here, or, or not, it's not a lake, it's a, actually a pond. And we would hang out at the pond. So I have so many great memories. But a couple weeks ago, I decided to push the limits and see how far I could go, farther than I had ever gone before. And we're gonna eventually make our way there, but there is this, this uh, pathway that splits. It splits in two different directions. The other way is another one of my favorite spots because it's so beautiful there. And then this other pathway that goes straight up a mountain. So I typically don't go that way. The last time I was up there until recently was probably 2005, maybe 2006. But it's a steep, steep hike. It is difficult. And you're going up and up and up and up and up. And just when you think you have a break, you go up even further. And it's very rocky, so it could be very slippery. And I know, like, before I started 
hiking for exercise and hiking at least three to five times a week, I would not have been able to do it. But your body gets used to it. And if you hike often, you'll find that you can do what you thought you couldn't do. You just push yourself. Of course, know your limits. You don't want to push yourself too much and hurt yourself. But I knew my limits. And I was able to scale that mountain and I made it up there and it was fine. But that place was unlike any place I've ever been. I have not been able to get it out of my head. The way it felt, the way it was up there. The further I went up, the more isolated I became. Nobody else was there. I couldn't hear anything either. There was no sound of cars or the lawnmowers or traffic, motorcycles, nothing. Pure nature. I could only hear the birds and the wind as it would blow. It was amazing. And what I found to be interesting too, when I go on a hike, no matter where it is in, in this particular region, the, the most usual, um, the, the way it usually looks is the forest floor has dead leaves. So you'll just see mostly that. And then there's random uh, uh, ferns or fields of ferns. But that's about it. Rarely do I come across a place that has thick, green, luscious grass. And that's what this is like when you get up to the top of the mountain. Just thick, green, luscious grass everywhere. And it is so interesting. And, and the, the feeling in the air, you definitely feel differently because you're much higher up. But it was just different. The whole place was different. It felt different. The vibe was different. The energy was different knowing that most likely no one had ever lived up there. That the way things are have been that way for hundreds of years. I started thinking about what I may find up there. Because there is a mystery that took place in my hometown back in the late 80s when I was a kid. And I remember the Late afternoon, as clear as day, it was February. And in February, that's when the, the, the sun changes a little bit. Things start to shift a bit. You know, December, November, into January, it gets dark really early. And it just has a certain vibe to it. It's almost kind of dreary-like. But February, the sun now has shifted a little bit. Like, things are changing. You know, spring is coming. So it's getting darker later now, and you can feel it, and you could see that change as it's happening. And on this day, I was noticing that. And it was also not quite sunset yet. The sun hadn't dipped below the horizon or was close to it, but it was that late day sun. So everything had this kind of orangey hue to it, this warm hue. And that's also, by the way, a great time to take photographs. The photos look typically amazing if you can get uh, that orange hue. Anyways, that was just a little side thing. So I'm in the, the dining room. And it's a, it's a small room where my mother has a china cabinet. And also there's a chandelier. And, I, and we had a big bay window. So I'm just noticing that bright orange lighting coming in. And I can still right now see the shadows on the wall and that orange glow inside the room. And as I'm standing there, suddenly there is a boom, an explosion, a massive explosion. It was kind of brief. It didn't last very long. It was not an earthquake, but it was an explosion. And everything shook. The chandelier shook back and forth violently. I could hear the china clinging along as it was moving. And, and at the time, my mother was at work, but it was my father, my two younger brothers, and younger sister, who was probably about two, two or three. And we all just stopped dead in our tracks. My brothers come running downstairs. What, what was that? And my father goes, I don't know, guys. You, you better stay in here. I, I need to go check this out. Now, my father was a cop. He was off duty, but he was a, a, a cop. So he knew that it wasn't right. He knew something was wrong. So he headed out and he walked onto these trails and he went towards the park area and kept going somewhere back there. 
Meanwhile, we're all standing in the house wondering what in the hell just happened. And we're just kind of like, you know, trying to comprehend what we just heard. And by the way, just to make this more unusual, this part of town is kind of like the middle of nowhere. You know, it, it is Countryville. Houses are far apart from each other. You know, there's not really much going on here. There's no well-known storefronts. You know, you got to go pretty far to go to the to a shopping center. All we have here is local stuff. So where, what the hell was that? There's no factories here. There's no, uh, none of that. So there just wasn't an, an, an easy answer. So my father goes out. And when he came back, it had already become nighttime. It was dark. And I had stayed, for some reason, I don't know why, I had stayed in that dining room. Maybe waiting for it to happen again. I don't know. Maybe standing by the windows because it, I had a great view. I really don't know. But I stayed in that room. And when he came back, he went on to explain what he had discovered. So at some point after the park, he started to smell sulfur. A very strong sulfur-like smell. And it wasn't necessarily sulfur, but that's what it reminded him of. This putrid, really strong smell. And while he's back there, an on-duty officer was also back there investigating and ran into him. So they started working together. And they could find nothing. Now this hiking trail on one particular end eventually will lead to a neighborhood. So I don't know if they went to that neighborhood because it sounds like, and I, I don't know quite the story or remember this quite as well, but it sounded like the officer was actually in the area and heard the explosion himself and pulled over his squad car and started walking towards where it happened. But they could find nothing. They saw no signs of anybody shooting off fireworks. They found nobody who took responsibility for it. There was zero answers, and nobody could ever find anything. And even years later, I was having a conversation with some, some friends, and we had never talked about it to each other, and they brought it up and said, oh, I remember this weird mystery that took place, you know, back uh, around 88 or so, and there was this explosion, and it was nobody ever solved it. Nobody knew what it was. I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course. I remember that. Very, very bizarre. So to this day, this mystery was never solved. All we know is that it came from the mountain area, from back here. And there was a smell. And it, it, there is no answer as to what it was. We could never find out. The police could never find out. Nobody ever found out. It, it remained a mystery. But here's where things get weird. Not too long after that, my parents divorced. I actually, they actually divorced that same year. So my father was gone that year. And not too long after that, we started to see military helicopters and jets over the house all the time. And at first, I didn't really think anything of it, but eventually they would be there all the time. And there was a military base that there was actually a facility that built these helicopters that were that was far, far away from where I lived. So we couldn't have been in their track. There was no answer as to why they were here, but they would come. Black jets, weird looking jets. I believe I saw the stealth bomber before it was ever announced. I just remember looking up and seeing this weird looking jet thing go by. But the helicopters, that's that was the weirdest thing. They were armed, and they would fly over the house and circle us. And every time they would circle, they would get lower until they were only like 25, 50 feet up in the air. I mean, I could practically see the pilot. And they would hover, hover over the house. And I could never understand what the hell this was. I had videotape of it. Unfortunately, it was on VHS, and the tapes are gone by now. But I had VH, uh, video of it. I would record them doing this, and it would happen all the time. Meanwhile, I had theories about what happened in the mountain. And I had those theories back when I was a kid. And they just grew 
when I saw these helicopters and all this military activity that was constantly going on in the air. I started to believe that something crashed back here. Something crashed here. And I started to believe that maybe it was something from another planet. Because I had this strong feeling of that. And I know that, you know, that's a weird thing to go to. But what I find most interesting is back then, if, if I would bring that up, there were those who would mock me and say, oh, those, they don't exist. But here we are now in 2022, and the government is admitting that UFOs are real. They have been real this whole time. They've known about them this whole time. They've been covering it up. So, I don't know. Was there a UFO that crashed up here? And is that why the military was always here? Were they searching for it? What did they know? And to make things even more interesting, if you listen to the first um, hike video I did, I told you that I had a television show when I was a teenager. Well, one day I get woken up early in the morning and it's a Saturday, the day we would shoot our episodes. And it's an early Saturday morning and I was trying to get as much sleep as I could because once the show, once we started shooting that those episodes, it was eight hours straight of filming. And I was a, a high school student. You know, I had high school all week and now I'm filming a TV show on all day Saturday. We didn't have any other days to film it. So we had to cram in as much as possible in those eight hours and get the entire episode shot on that in the in that time frame so i'm sleeping and suddenly the phone rings and it's my father and nobody else was answering the phone so i'm like why isn't anyone answering the phone turned out nobody was home so i answer the phone and my father's like are you all right i'm like what are you okay are you all right how's the house how's everybody else is everybody good are you all right and i'm like i am fine i just was sleeping a little bit. I got my show later to do. Um, okay. I just wanted to check. I just want to make sure the house is not on fire or nothing. On fire? What? No. What are you What are you talking about? Oh, you don't know? I don't know what. There was a helicopter accident right next door. Like, what? What do you mean, a helicopter accident? Yeah, a helicopter came down in the farm field. It's on fire right now. The street's all blocked off. Oh. Well, maybe that's why nobody's here. They can't get here. Um, okay, you know what? Just hold off. Let me go check. So I go outside. Now, my bedroom was in the basement, and my studio, my TV studio, was right next to it. And I had outside doors, so that's what, that, that's what made it perfect, because the cast could come over, park in the driveway, come walk in the back, and enter through the basement door, uh, these French doors. And that's where the studio was. So I go walk outside, and this was, uh, uh, I think, early spring, maybe, late winter. And I could smell it, this putrid, horrible, burning smell. And unfortunately, what I would learn later on is part of that smell was burning bodies, unfortunately. As it turned out, it was a military helicopter that had crashed in that field. And at the time, nobody could make sense out of it because they were highly skilled. How do you crash in a farm field in a small little town? So why were they so low to begin with? What happened? There was never an answer. Never an answer. But it grew. My suspicions grew after that. After having military helicopters, armed helicopters, Apaches. I'm talking Apaches above my house, circling the house, just hovering up there. And then a helicopter crashes next door. It all was just crazy. And that further um, furthered my, it, my suspicion that something crashed in, on that mountain and in 1998. And they have been searching for it ever since. And they know about it and never could find it. So that's my interesting story about an unsolved mystery. And I always think about it whenever I come back here. And when I walked deep into the woods a couple weeks ago and walked up that mountain, I was sure that I was going to see something. Sure of it. 
that I was going to discover something that, that people have been searching for for all of this time. So the big question is, what in the hell happened on that day? What was it that exploded, that crashed, that, that gave off this putrid odor? And what was the purpose of these armed Apache helicopters hovering over this house in the country? Right along a forest, middle of nowhere. What was going on there? I never got an answer. And that's my story for today. And now, and now a, a shameless, shameless plug. plug. It's Mike with another shameless plug. Today's shameless plug is all about the spooky season. If you're looking for something really spooky, something scary, something creepy, something paranormal, something maybe from outer space, check out ParanormalAliens.com. Every spooky and scary design that you find here at ParanormalAliens.com has been created by me in my mad scientist lab down in my dank, dark basement. And now I'm offering it to you. So check out ParanormalAliens.com for something really spooky. Perfect for the Halloween season. ParanormalAliens.com. Check it out today. And now, back to our video. <laughs>